们纽约中华企业协会，那么成立的最重要的目的，那么就是希望呃要帮助我们呃社区一些商会跟主流有一个沟通的一个桥梁。那么我们很高兴，我们美国联邦商务部国家商业发展总署呃董继林董副总署长，他是我们华裔在在那个商务部当中最高层级的领导。那么。我们在二零零三年，那么在于美东美西两岸的那个商会的几个负责人，我们就倡议要成立一个，就是呃，帮助我们讲中国话的、讲普通话的、讲国语的，所有的只要能听得懂中文的，呃，的企业家来做服务。所以我们当时的名字就用 Manual Business Association， 就是讲中文的企业的服务的协定。经过这个商务部在后呃强力的全力的支持我们，给我们很多资讯。那么我们就在这一些资讯方面来呃展开这个服务的工作。我们很高兴在有短短的五年当中，我们已经在美国的主流的商业界，还有在联邦商务部方面取得非常。工作的成果，我们纽约中华企业协会跟 SBA， 就是美国的国家少中小企业管理总局签了 MOU， 就是合作策略联盟。那么我们这一次的活动也是跟少数族裔商业发展署，也就是国家商业发展总署签订了合作协议。所以说，由我们代表政府一起跟他们合办。然后把他们引领到我们纽约的华人的社区来。我们希望有我们的呃抛砖引玉，有我们的努力，可以让更多的企业家更实惠、更主动的，而且更近距离的来接触美国主流。那么，而且跟我们主管政策的这些联邦的各部门的首长跟领导们，那么研讨。那么怎么样帮助生意更发展，然后有造福那个社会，有更密切的呃实质工作的成果 ？Good morning, welcome this morning.、Uh, the weather is is not as good, but we appreciate all of you joining here,、um, us here in Flushing, Illinois. You know, on behalf of the White House Initiative. Uh, on behalf of the United States Department of Commerce, the White House Initiative on Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, the Mandarin Business Associ Association, and the Minority Business Development Agency, we want to be able to thank all of you for joining us. We actually have a great、um, lineup of speakers today. We have some great people, and we look forward to being able to just、um, meet each of you and to be able to hopefully establish some long relationships. So,、um, just to start off. I want to introduce Mr. Hayward Davenport. He's the regional director for the Minority Business Development Agency here at the United States Department of Commerce. A good friend, a good man, and someone who I know loves New York and knows that New York is the center of the United States. So,、uh, Thank you, Jeremy. I just want to, on behalf of the Northeast Regional Office,、uh, located in Manhattan. Most of you know me. I, I've seen most of you over the years, and welcome again here today. But I especially want to welcome all our friends from out of town、uh, to New York City. It's a pleasure having you here, and、um, I want to、uh, just to paraphrase what Jimmy was saying. It's true that、uh, the old saying is that when you leave Manhattan, you can't be. What we've done now in Queens, in Flushing, in this、uh, facility here, we're extending that. So Manhattan, Queens. I mean, we always say that when you want to have a big event, we come to Manhattan because that's where everybody comes. But now we have an alternate site out here in Flushing. There's a great Queens crossing. This is one of our star, one of our proud developers here. So we're proud to be able to host this event here in Queens crossing. So I want to welcome everybody here. Feel free. We have staff here, and we hope you have a wonderful program for you this morning. And you'll be hearing more about that as we go along. To get the morning program started, I'd like to introduce my friend, my old friend, Mr. Jim Chu, who's the president of the Manly Association. We all know him. We've had a long relationship with him to kind of guide us through the rest of the program. Mr. Chu. Ladies and gentlemen. 
I'm very honored to be here to be a co-host uh, of 2008 New York Regional uh, Conference on Asian Americans and the Pacific Islands. I want to thank the Department of Commerce, Minority Business Development Agency, and the, the White House Initiative on Asian Americans and the Pacific Islands to choi choice flourishing for this high-level business conference. I hope today's program will benefit you all and uh, lead the, your company to the next level. Please join and uh, have a wonderful time. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate that. I have the pleasure of being able to introduce um, um, a lovely person and she's lovely partly because during my days in Washington she helped sign my paycheck. So um, I would like to introduce Ms. Chilling Tong who is the Chief of Staff as well as the Associate Director for the United States Department of Commerce, the Minority Business Development Agency. We'll introduce our team speaker. because uh, this is a very, uh, you know, developed place and uh, we have uh, so many immigrants here. They are doing very well, but they do not know how to get information from government. So we have a couple of speakers here there already. We have uh, four panels. The first panel is how to grow business internationally. The second panel is how to have access to capital and invest your company. And the third one is how to get a contract from the federal government. And the fourth one is how to get resources and contract from big corporations. Some of you, you may not have this opportunity to have contract with government or corporations at this level. But I'm sure in the future, and there are so many presidents from different business associations, I would like to have you to share this information uh, with your members. At this time, I want to introduce you or a uh, couple of uh, staff from uh, our office. You have seen our regional director, Mr. Haywood Davenport, and also Imani, where are you? Imani, yes, please stand up. 
and Jiang Ko, please jump. Would you please stand up? And uh, uh, Wang Wuba, please stand up. Those three staff who have been working so hard to help Asian minority business to grow. So during the whole day conference, they will spend time over there at the booth. If you have any question about your business, how to expand your business, just go to find them. You will be surprised how much they can help you to expand your business. Just consider this conference is like a matchmaking to move your business to the next level. Now this is my privilege to introduce you a very special lady. Uh, Chairman Noor, she is, uh, she is really, a, a, how do I say, a leader. She's not only, you know, it's very difficult to survive in, in Washington, D.C. As a woman for there for five years, I feel struggling every day. I ask myself, why am I here? Can I quit tomorrow? But she's not quitting. And she has done tremendous, she has tremendous experience in the private sector and public sector and also non-profit organization. Because Consumer Product Safety Commission is such a critical agency, and I think uh, we're just so honored to have her with us this morning, just to open the conference. And then later on, or next section, the first section, how to grow your business internationally, we'll have a panel, panelist to talk about to uh, more about the, uh, her mission. Chairman Moore was nominated by President Bush to be a commissioner of the Consumer Product Safety Commission for a term that expired in October of 2012. The CPAC protects the public against unreasonable risk of injury and death associated with consumer products. She was confirmed by the Senate for that position on April 29, 2005 and was sworn in into office on May 5, 2005. So this is your anniversary. <laughs> Chairwoman Nord was born and raised uh, in South Dakota and she holds a bachelor degree from the University of Nebraska and a law degree from George Washington University in Washington, D.C. Chairwoman Nord has held a number of legal positions both in the federal government and also in the private sector. Her federal experience includes service as general counsel of the White House Council on Environmental Quality, counsel to the Com Commerce Committee of U.S. House of Representatives, and attorney at the Federal Communications Commission. In the private sector, she was the director of federal affairs for the uh, Eastman Kodak Company and practiced law in Washington, D.C. She also served as the executive director of American Corporate Council Association and was director of consumer affairs for the U.S. Uh, Chamber of Commerce. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have very, very well welcome for our uh, chairwoman, Nord. Okay. 
Um, the CPSC was set up about 35 years ago, and its purpose is to protect the public against unreasonable risks of injury associated with consumer products. That's a pretty big statement. That's a pretty big mission. We are a very small agency. We've only got about 400 people. Uh, but we have a very, very big job to do. Um, to understand the products we regulate, I think it's easiest to understand what we don't regulate. And on this PowerPoint, I've uh, put to show you some of the things that we don't regulate. Uh, basically, I, I think I can describe it this way. If, if you don't eat it, drink it, smoke it, drive it, shoot it, or put it on your face to make you look better, it's under our jurisdiction. It's a very, very broad jurisdiction we have. We, we, we are the stopgap agency that, that takes care of the things that the Food and Drug Administration, the Transportation Administration, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, uh, Agriculture, all those agencies with specialized jurisdiction, if they don't regulate it, then we've got it. We carry out our mission in a number of different ways. We certainly issue regulations. We'll write safety standards uh, at our agency and issue them as mandatory standards. But more importantly, um, we work with businesses to help them develop consensus voluntary safety standards. Because I'm a firm believer that the federal government can't do it all. In fact, we can only do a small part of it. So if there's a way to uh, advance safety by the business community writing its own standards, then that makes a lot more sense than the government regulating. If we do see unsafe products out on store shelves and in the marketplace, then our remedy is generally to issue a recall and pull the product off store shelves and try to get the product out of the hands of consumers. And I think all of you are aware of the recalls that we've been doing over this past year. We try to educate people about what their obligations are under the law. And that's one of the reasons I'm here today. I see it as my responsibility to reach out to people like you and, and talk with you about our expectations. And then finally, if we do find somebody who has violated the law, we have the authority to issue both civil and criminal sanctions. And indeed, there are some people sitting in jail right now for violating uh, the laws that we implement. Our laws extend to everyone in the product distribution chain. So it doesn't go only to manufacturers. It is only manufacturers who have the obligation for safety. It is distributors, it is importers, and it is retailers. So I want to emphasize, we do expect people who import products into the United States to take responsibility for the safety of the products they import. And uh, they, importers, are as fully liable under our laws as a manufacturer. <clears throat> Another very interesting aspect of the laws that we regulate is that we have a reporting requirement. And this is a kind of a unique um, provision of law because basically what it says is that if you as a manufacturer a retailer, an importer, if you become aware that one of the products you're working with may pose a safety risk, you have an obligation, a legal obligation, to immediately come to our agency and inform us. What happens then is that we will take a look at the problem, we will work with you, uh, we will make a determination, as to whether there's an actual safety issue there. And if so, we will probably require uh, a recall of that product. But if you don't come to us, then you are in violation of the law. So we do impose 
kinds, and we do it on a regular basis for people who do not report to us in a timely manner. And that's just something that you all should be aware of, because it's a little known provision of the law, but it is a very powerful tool for us, and we do use it. So ta that, that was a, a, intended to be a general overview of our agency and what our agency does. And, and it really was a very general overview. Our, our statutes are uh, rather complicated, but I hope you get a sense of, of the kinds of things we do. The focus over the last year, year and a half, has been on import safety. Uh, this was triggered by some very high-profile recalls that not only our agency did, but, but some of the other agencies did. But my agency handled all the toy recalls. The Thomas the Tank Engine, the Mattel problems, all the lead paint issues, that was all done by my agency. And um, as I said, we are a small agency. This is a very, very large pro problem or issue. Uh, $2 trillion worth of goods are imported into the United States. Um, about $650 billion worth of goods imported into the United States represent goods that are under the jurisdiction of the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Um, there are over 800,000 importers. There are 300 ports of entry. So it is a big problem. It's, it's, um, there's a lot of waterfront for our agency to cover. Um, the other reality of all this is that many of the goods that are imported into the United States and the goods that were recalled um, are coming from Asia and more specifically from China. As you can see over here, 85% of the recalls that we did last year were of imported products. And about two-thirds of those recalls were products manufactured in China. Um, this is an attempt to show you how the issue has grown over the years. Um, as you can see, this is the red bar over there. That represents uh, the recalls that we did from China. The very last column over here is fiscal year 2008, the current year. That's only half the year. So I think you can see that recalls are going up. It's not a problem that's going away. It's, it's a problem that continues. So um, I would expect that at the end of the year, this bar is going to be probably up there. Everyone's imagination and attention this past year was caught by the toy recalls. And I had parents coming up to me and saying, you know, Nancy, what can I buy? It seems like nothing is safe these days. And, um, <gasps> You know, the, the marketplace is, by and large, safe. We have got the safest toys, the safest products available to American consumers in any place in the world. Nevertheless, these recalls did catch Americans' uh, attention. And I just wanted to, to focus in on, on toy recalls for just a moment. Um, in fiscal year 2007, and I think all of you understand fiscal year the government runs from October 1 through September 30. It's not a calendar year. But for fiscal year 07, we recalled 63 toys for being unsafe. 63 different toy products. Um, the vast majority of those toys, 59 of the 63, came from China. Uh, this year, this fiscal year, and understand we're only two thirds of the way through it. Uh, we have now had 54 toy recalls. So again, I am going to expect that number is going to go up, and, and it's going to be, we're going to see more toy recalls this year than we did last. And um, so all that being true, what are we doing about it? Um, from 
my standpoint, I think that what we need to provide American consumers are layers of protection. And you can't solve this issue by only doing one thing, only by inspecting at the courts, for example. And, and that's, um, in, in dealing with Congress, uh, they seem to think, well, if only you had more inspectors at the court, this, this problem would be solved. I think we all understand uh, that you can't solve it in just one way. We need to do a number of things. You need to, first of all, engage foreign governments. You need to make sure that product manufacturers understand their obligations so that the products, hopefully, are manufactured safely in the first place. Certainly, you need to have surveillance of the ports. You need to engage retailers in this so that if they see unsafe products, they, they come and tell us. Obviously, if, if we have problems, we do recalls. Um, then we have to go into the marketplace and make sure that the recall product is really removed from the shelves. And in the worst case, we, we do impose penalties, but those are all layers of protection uh, that we work through in order to protect the American consumer. With respect to imports, what we are doing now to implement those layers of protection um, involves a number of different steps. As I said, government to government uh, interaction is very, very critical. And our agency now has negotiated 14 memorandum of understanding with foreign governments uh, to set up uh, points of contact and communication channels so that we can talk through product safety issues as they arrive. As they arise, um, we certainly have a memorandum of understanding with China, but we also have uh, MOUs with Korea, with Japan, uh, India, Vietnam, a number of other countries. So this is a way of opening those lines of communication. We also work very hard to try to educate foreign suppliers as to their obligations under the law. We have uh, put in place a import safety initiative, um, and I'll talk about that in just a moment, but I handed out some copies of that. It's, it's you know, scattered around the room. And then we are working closely um, with retailers. Getting a bit more specific about our uh, conversations with the Chinese government. We started our dialogue with the Chinese government in 2004. In 2007, in September, we had a U.S. Sino Safety Summit in Washington, D.C. And at that time, the CPSC and our counterpart agency, AQSIQ, signed uh, some agreements setting out some specific things that the Chinese government agreed to undertake in four problem areas uh, dealing with lighters, fireworks, toys, and electrical products. Those are the four areas where we've seen the most recalls, we've seen the most problems. Um, since that time, the Chinese government really has undertaken a number of activities that indicate to me that at least right now, uh, they are taking this problem seriously. Um, for example, they are doing inspections of the facilities that make product for export, and uh, they tell us that they have now conducted uh, um, uh, inspections of 3,500 toy factories, and, and obviously there are many, many more in China, but, but they are working their way through them. They have uh, crack down on repeat violators. Um, they have uh, put together um, supplier lists, acceptable supplier lists for certain kinds of component parts, of course, specifically lead paint. And um, they have been suspending export licenses. Whenever we do a recall now, um, we notify the Chinese government, the Chinese government then investigates and they come back to us with a report as to what they did. We have monthly uh, meetings with the Chinese government to follow up on each of those things. So um, the, at this point, I am 
pleased with the response of the Chinese government, and our challenge will now be to follow through and make sure that it, it lasts and it, and it is an ongoing, continuing response. Um, we also feel that we need to talk with the Chinese uh, suppliers of product because they need to understand what the requirements are in the United States. If we don't put those requirements out there, if we don't tell them what our expectations are, then it is very hard for us to complain if, if they um, manufacture it improperly. So we are gearing up those activities. We have, um, if you go to our website, cpsc.gov, um, you can, there is a business tab there, and under that business tab there are a number of uh, resources uh, that you can use to um, help you understand what our laws are and what our requirements are. We've also got a link on our homepage in Chinese, and if you click on that, that will take you to a whole um, grouping of um, educational products that are available in both uh, English and Chinese. They include our handbook for manufacturing safer consumer products. Um, we've also got a video, um, Consumer Products Exported to the United States, Who is Responsible for Safety? And again, this is in Chinese and it's intended to be an introductory training video. So I would um, um, recommend that for your viewing pleasure. Uh, we've also got a form on the website for you to submit questions to us. If you don't know what to do, use the form and, and ask the questions and somebody will get back to you. We have also stepped up our activities with respect to import surveillance. And I've listed some of the, what we're doing here. I think the main point is that we are paying a great deal of attention to what is coming into this country. We now have dedicated uh, staff at many of our ports. We are working very closely with the Customs Service. Some of you may be aware of the Customs Service's efforts to establish um, the ITDS uh, Automated Commercial Environment Database. This is a database that is going to be tracking imports into the United States um, on a real-time basis as they leave the point of export. So our people have access to that database so that they will be able to track shipments and um, when there are suspect shipments, we can uh, have customs pull those for inspection. Uh, but I think the point of that is that you know, our eyes are going to be much sharper and uh, the days of, of port shopping uh, are, uh, are over. Um, I referenced uh, this import safety strategy. Um, all of this is detailed in that document. This document is on our website um, because I really do care how what we do impacts uh, you all. I've put it up on the website and I have invited comments. And we will consider those comments. So I would encourage all of you to go to the website, take a look at it, and if you have concerns or comments, please let us know. We will, we will listen to what you have to say. Finally, as importers, or as people that work with the importing community, I do think you need to look at your own practices and make sure that they are appropriate for the modern world. It is the 21st century and we all need to have 21st century tools. And that includes knowing your suppliers, uh, knowing what products you're importing, you're selling, and um, you've got an obligation to, to look at the safety aspects of the products um, that, that you're bringing into this country and understanding where they came from. Um, the 
president uh, last summer put together a um, import safety task force. Um, my agency sat on the task force. We were very big contributors to that work. One of the outgrowths of that task force's work is a document that is going to be published um, shortly called um, Guidance for Industry Good Importer Practices. Uh, it's going to be in the Federal Register um, shortly for comment. So I would encourage all of you to keep your eyes open uh, and look for that. Uh, again, comments are welcome and they will be considered. As I said earlier, our, our statutes are, are very complex and um, this is not an easy area to master. But we really do want you to master it because if you guys get it right, then it's less problems for us. <gasps> so if you have questions, um, please feel free to contact us. Um, I, I just can't emphasize that enough. We, we do want to hear from you. We, we are from the government. We are here to help you. And um, uh, so here is a contact point uh, if you need one. And then finally, um, as I said when I started, um, I am so pleased to be here because I think the work that you all do just represents so much innovation and um, imagination. Uh, we, we live in a global society. We all have to get together and, and um, work together. And, and the community you represent is just uh, is so full of creativity and, and imagination and innovation that I am just very, very proud to uh, be here today and, and talk with you. Um, and I'm very, very committed to uh, making sure that uh, as you do your work, you, you have good success. So thank you very much. Chairwoman Noor, thank you so much for coming here. Uh, she, I think she uh, got up early, probably 3 o'clock this morning, in order to take the first flight to uh, flying to New York and uh, Flushing. Let's give her another round of applause. Uh, now we have a special presentation. Uh, when I call the name of the, all the presidents of different associations, would you please come forward and line up on the stage and then we'll make a photo. Uh, Chairman Noor, this is a special presentation for you. In appreciation of your contribution to the national Asian American business community, and we have the following association they would like to give you a, a plaque. Mandarin Business Association, Asian Korean Business Group, New York Korean Business Association, Flushing Chinese Business Association. Whoever I have a call your organization, please, uh, President, please put, uh, come forward. New York Chinese Business Association, a Product Safety Association International, Indochina Sino American Community Center, China General Chamber of Commerce, China General Chamber of Commerce, American Chinese Business and Women's Association, and Chinese Import and Export Council of America, American Shanghai General Business Council, Asian American Representative National Federation, United Council of Chinese American and uh, uh, American Sound Group, Shoe Enterprise Group, and the uh, Ultimate Financial Solutions, America United Chamber of Commerce, U.S. China Business and Investment Association, New York Society of Korean Businessmen Incorporate, and Chinese American Parent Student Council of New York. Thank you. 
，我我介绍一下，它是那个美国白宫啊，亚太地那个总统顾问委员会的前任的主席，那个他是对我们亚太地的这个社区啊，做了非常多的贡献，他是对于民意，他对于我们华裔的啊任何一个都会参加，他是我最好的朋友，也是我们。约中华企业协会，那么最高级的、最有影响力的、最支持我们的。Yes, thank you. I would like to talk a little bit about Jim. Jim and I have been friends for what three years now. We first met when I was in China, where we did a visit uh, to learn more about economic development opportunities in China. And since then, he and I have been very close. But more importantly, he has been. The cornerstone of the Asian American community here in the East Coast, and he has developed a strong organization here to help all businessmen and women do much better within the community. For that, we're very proud.